Hi there. My name is Greg Nelson. I'm a luthier here in Northern California and I'm doing a series of videos on how to build a steel string acoustic guitar. Partway through trying to build the bridge, I decided I needed to change the blade on my bandsaw here and thought it might be useful for some of you to see uh, a proper setup of a bandsaw. These are very useful pieces of equipment. They'll resaw material, they'll cut tight little radiuses, they'll do all kinds of different things, but they can also be very frustrating if they're not set up properly from the beginning. So if this isn't a safety uh, video or a how to use the machine, I'm going to go through some of the basic requirements for setting up a bandsaw properly. So here we go. Um, right now the bandsaw's got a, a half inch blade on it that is pretty good for doing some resaw work I was doing before, but I want to make some tight little cuts. So I'm going to be going down to a quarter inch blade. To do so, I've uh, first, of course, unplugged the bandsaw so that I don't have any um, accidental starts here. And then i got to access the blade. The bandsaw consists of two wheels, one up and one down, that are in line with each other. Uh, and the blade spins around inside there to make the cut. Those are the basics. So to get this blade off, all I really need to do is to release the tension up here, get a few things out of the way, and then I can pull the blade out. Now that I've removed the guard, I need to pop out the throat plate. That's usually a simple matter of pushing up from the bottom, although some bandsaws will have uh, screw or something you need to take out there. Save that. And then this is actually a fairly important piece on the saw here, this little this little uh, tapered, it's not quite a bolt, it's a, it's a little keeper in here. That keeps the table from getting out of parallel uh, while you're using it. The casting of the steel can move. If you don't have one of these, you really need to get one and uh, get it replaced. So now the path has been cleared to be able to pull the blade off. Now this is a, still a sharp blade, but even dull blades can hurt you, so you've got to be careful with this at all times. And I'm just going to work the blade off the wheels. I've already slacked the tension. And then take the blade out. So here's the blade that I'm going to be putting on the saw, and it's wrapped up in a nice little coil. Here's the one that I just took off. Kind of ungainly and hard to deal with. Um, so, but it's not all that difficult to get it into that nice compact package. This blade's still sharp. I want to save it. I want to use it again. Uh, but to to um, to get it into that small shape is actually pretty simple, but it takes a little bit of practice. If you hold the blade at about 50% uh, on each side, and you rotate one hand one direction, one hand the other, I always go kind of away from me with my right hand and towards me with my left. I can twist the blade. And if I keep coming around, eventually it goes into that nice little circle. You want to be careful with this. This is a more of a spring steel and it could bounce back and hit you. Probably should be wearing some safety glasses, but as I said, this isn't a safety video. So undoing the other blade is about the same way and this one is going to spring on me. I got to be ready for that. And uh, then the next thing I do before I put this on is to check and make sure the teeth are going the right direction because I can flip this inside out easily and have the teeth be going the wrong direction. So I think everybody will give you an experience of turning on their freshly put in blade and it won't cut at all and they wonder why and it's because the blade was put in backwards. So be careful of that. Before I go any further, I've got an opportunity to do a little housekeeping here. I'm going to get all the dust out of the way so it doesn't interfere with the new setup. Uh, especially under the table is a place that people ignore often with, uh, with their cleanup. So let's get this thing looking good. I've removed the blade guard so you can see what's going on here. That's not necessary for changing a blade, uh, but I just couldn't get the shot otherwise. Um, this is your basic guide system. Uh, there's another one exactly like it down below, but, uh, but upside down. Uh, you'll want to do this on both, uh, both of your guides uh, to do a proper setup. Uh, one of the things I do right now is I check and make sure that my thrust bearing is spinning nicely. Now, 
This one's actually making a little bit of noise, which tells me it may be on its way out. It's not bound up, it's still functioning, so I'm gonna keep it on here for now and not change it. But what I wanna do is I wanna get it out of the way. Before I put the new blade on, I don't wanna have anything interfering with it, so I'm just gonna back it away lock it back down again. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my side guides. Side guides uh, on this one came, I think they were metal when I first got them. I think they were little pieces of brass. Uh, I went to Cool Blocks, which is a little uh, composite material uh, that would uh, help cool the blades and uh, or guide the blades and keep them cool. I've since gone to these pieces of lignum vitae, which is a very oily, dense, hard wood, uh, and they seem to be doing a good job for me. Lots of different materials you can do for this, uh, but I'm just going to loosen the nuts and back these away so that they're not in the way of the new blade. Might even wind up backing this away too. I'm going to do the same thing down below. With the guides out of the way, I can now maneuver the new blade into place. Once I've got it in place, I'm just going to tighten my upper wheel a little bit until I got just a little bit of tension. With just that slight amount of tension, I'm going to rotate slowly on the upper wheel here by hand, and you'll see the blade should get close to center. I'm going around a couple of times here, and it's not exactly on center. I'm going to give it another turn or two on the tension and then go back to the alignment adjustment. Your saw should have an adjustment that looks somewhat like this on the back side. It's going to tilt the angle of the top wheel backwards or forwards and that will center the blade on the wheel. So again, spinning the saw slowly by hand and adjusting one way or another, you'll finally be able to find a proper spot to get the blade right at top dead center of the wheel and then lock it down again. This is the blade tensioning guide on my saw. Technically, since I've got a quarter inch blade, uh, I should be able to bring the little red line right up to where it says a quarter inch and I'll have the proper tension for that blade. These are notoriously underscaled. Um, I'm going to take this one up to at least the 3 8 or half inch tension. Uh, too much and I will potentially break the weld on the blade, but when I do this I don't break the weld and I get a better cut. Different blades will require different tensions. There are some low tension blades out there that do actually work better under lower tension. You'll have to do your own experimenting with this. The process for setting your guide is the same for the upper guide as it is for the lower guide. You want to start with your side guides first. And I'm going to unlock this and uh, adjust it out so that the, the two guides are in line with the blade right now. And then I'm going to push these two guides in so they're just barely touching. Some people will slip a dollar bill in there to give it a little bit of space. Other people will do a credit card. I don't like to have too much space on these, uh, especially on this little quarter inch blade. There's not a whole lot holding it. Um, some people will also uh, wax or otherwise lubricate their blades uh, prior to installing them. That's an option for you. I've never found it to be necessary. So I'm going to lock this into place so it, it's the guide itself isn't moving from side to side. And you can see I can easily distort this blade if I push too hard on it. I don't want to do it. I want this blade to be running as relaxed as I possibly can. So I'm just going to move up to it and finger tighten these two things. Make sure I haven't bound the blade. It still has a little bit of wiggling room. There you go. And then I'll tighten these two down. Once I've done that, it looks like I can actually move this forward a little bit. I want to be right behind the gullet of the teeth. I don't want to be up where the teeth are. Obviously, I don't want to cut my guide, um, but that's not going to help at all either. Now I need to adjust the thrust bearing in the back. This one is a little more delicate to deal with. 
Uh, I'm going to pull it up just behind the blade at this point. But I mean just behind the blade. If I spin the blade, it shouldn't touch as it's running free. Now you can see this has got a little bit of back and forth motion to it right now. So I need to move it a little bit further forward and then test it again. It's still not touching. Still has a little bit of room. I want it to just barely not be there. When I turn this saw on, I want it to run without that bearing spinning. I only want that bearing to start working when I push on the blade as I'm making my cut. I'm going to do the same thing down below. I've got my guides are set and if I spin the wheel by hand everything seems to be smooth. I'm going to go ahead and put my throat plate back in and that table minder pin, I'll have to find out what the real name for that is one of these days. Uh, got all my guards are in place. I'm going to plug this back in again and I'm going to give her a go. When I do and this is a good practice with any tool that you've just set up with a new blade or done some new jig with. Um, you turn it on with the intention of turning it off right away. Give it a little shot. That way, if something goes wrong, you're already in the middle of turning it off and you don't need to react. Everything seems to be running well. Everything's running smooth. Uh, it's not touching my bearing. I didn't want it to. I don't have, you know, I've got a very tiny amount of movement before it does. Um, and then here's another thing, again, your comfort level, uh, your safety, uh, if you're going to do something like this. Uh, many of the really good blade manufacturers will already have eased the back side of the blade. But there's a lot of inexpensive blades out there, and sometimes you've got a little manufacturing burr on the back side of the blade. I've got some 400 grit sandpaper here on a little block and while the machine is running I can soften that back edge. That can help sometimes with uh, with tight cuts and try so that the back doesn't hang up so easily. So there you have it, the basics of bandsaw setup. Your tool might be a little bit different from this 14 inch rigid, uh, the tensioner might be different, the guides might be different, but the concepts are all the same. I hope it helps.